Um, I think there's an inherent psychological condition uh, whereby humans really crave and desire a little bit of mystery in our lives, a little bit of intrigue. Uh, I think deep down that we like to think that uh, you know, perhaps there are things out there that we don't quite understand, things that go bump in the dark. And, um, you know, it, it, it brings a sense of adventure to our lives. A lot of cryptozoologists, you know, it's a very, there's kind of an emotional attachment to the subject matter. Because when you're talking about things like Bigfoot, um, things like we're out here investigating now that have almost a legendary tinge to them, you know, it strikes on a nerve that we have as humans. But from a scientific point of view, I think that you actually have to, you know, have to, you have to be willing to debunk and reject things that don't fit into the accepted theory or into, you know, common sense. This is my machete. And um, <clears throat> it was actually made in El Salvador, but I purchased it down in the nation of Belize. Uh, which is uh, one of my favorite countries in the world down in Central America. I've been there three times investigating uh, creatures that are similar to Bigfoot. A lot of people are not aware of the fact that uh, Bigfoot is not only a North American phenomenon, but it is in fact a global phenomenon. I don't really fear Bigfoot in the waking hours. To me, Bigfoot is probably some type of highly intelligent hominid. I think, I get the sense that Bigfoot is a peaceful creature and does not want to come in contact with us. I know that Native Americans revere Bigfoot quite a bit. They feel that he's a spirit form or a man of the woods, depending on the interpretation, and that he's simply to be left alone. And there's really not a lot of uh, evidence that they would ever be hostile towards us. You know, I think they basically want to avoid us much more than we want to avoid them. Definitely a predator or a carnivore, something slinking low to the ground. It looks, oh, there goes the other one, it's kind of bounding. Now they're running over here behind this tree, straight over here. I'm hesitant to say that there's been a crowning moment or a crowning achievement um, because to me that sort of puts a, uh, an expiration date on what I do. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, the adventure is just beginning at this point. I've been very active in the field of cryptozoology for about 10 years now. Um, you know, although it's been a lifelong obsession and passion of mine, it really took me into my adult years to uh, dedicate myself to this pursuit. So, you know, I, I'd like to think that I have contributed to the field positively, um, that I have brought certain things, certain events to light that uh, needed to be brought to light. You know, just being out here this area where there have been many, many reports of a mysterious animal, uh, to have an opportunity to track that animal, um, and moreover to commune with nature, you know, and just to be out here and uh, track and hunt as humans have for thousands of years, uh, to me is very exciting. So, you know, that's why I love this.